When people think of snakes in Tucson, they probably think of rattlesnakes with that scary rattling, hissing sound, an angry looking coiled snake about to inject you with venom. But there are a lot more snakes around Tucson than just the rattlesnakes we're all fascinated with and petrified of at the same time. How do you prevent snakes from getting into your Tucson backyard? How do you keep your children and pets safe from snakes? All these answers and much more coming right up. It's Kimberly, your go-to real estate agent in Tucson, Arizona, and today we are talking about Tucson snakes, how to identify them, and what you need to know about them. As always, if you like what you hear or have something to add to this video, please like and subscribe and comment below, and check out the other videos about Tucson on this channel. I'd love to help you buy or sell a Tucson home, so reach out to me when you're ready to get into Tucson real estate. All my contact information is in the description below each video on this channel. And today, I have to give a huge shout out to our buddies over at Rattlesnake Solutions. These guys gave us the footage we are using in this video today, and they are an awesome snake removal service here in Tucson and in Phoenix. So if you have snake questions or needs, reach out to Rattlesnake Solutions and they will help you out. They've also got a really cool YouTube channel and I'll be putting all their contact info in the description below this video. Check out their channel after this one. So guys, let's dive in and talk about some of these cool Tucson snakes, how to recognize them, and what you need to know about each of them. Well, first of all, yes, we do have rattlesnakes in Tucson. Most commonly, the Western Diamondback. The diamond shapes running along the snake's back give it away. The triangular head of the snake also lets you know that the snake is venomous. This is probably the most feared snake around because it's the most prominent and most dangerous. The Western Diamondback is a pretty hardy snake that can live in many geographical areas all the way up to 7,000 feet above sea level. These snakes are pit vipers, which means that they sense surroundings by using a heat sensing pit to detect heat given off by animals to determine if they are prey or predator. The diamondback's habitat ranges from northern half of Mexico into the southwest United States, including Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, California, and Oklahoma. The typical size can range from three to five feet, but have been known to get up to seven feet. These snakes eat rats, mice, birds, rabbits, and other small animals. If I don't see them, and if they're keeping my pack rats away, that's a plus in my book. Pack rats are such a nuisance and we can help justify rattlesnakes as somewhat of a guardian. These snakes usually hunt at night, which is why we don't see them very often or see them more frequently. They are most active during the warmer months of the year around monsoon season, but this doesn't mean we shouldn't worry in the winter. During warm winter days, they can still be seen. Most people are deathly afraid of rattlesnakes, and you really should be a little bit cautious around them at the very least. Most animals have an intrinsic, evolutionary fear of snakes. The sound of the rattle alone can trigger primal fear in most of us. Luckily, most of the time, the snake wants to be left alone and will do what they can to avoid humans. If they feel threatened, they will coil and prepare themselves for protection while assuming a striking stance, if you will. If you encounter a rattlesnake, it's best to keep your distance and alert others. Don't throw anything at it or try to mess with the snake. If it's in your yard, you may call 911 or a snake removal service promptly to have the snake removed. In our area of town, the fire department usually will come and take care of the snake for you. In all honesty, rattlesnakes are living creatures that were here before we were, and we should respect their habitat. We have luckily not had any rattlesnake encounters in our yard, but we do have a secret weapon. More on that later in the video. My husband hikes a lot and finally ran into a rattlesnake on the trail. It was behind a bush and could have easily made a strike at my husband as he walked by. But the only reason my husband knew it was there was because it simply gave out a friendly, quick little rattle as if to say, watch out, please. The snake was about four feet long and my husband watched it as it crossed the trail slowly. We encounter our next two Tucson snakes in this video much more frequently. The next one being the king snake. The king snake is a non-venomous snake that is usually black 
with bands of yellow to white. These snakes can have quite the pattern or color variation. We have seen the traditional black and yellow to pure black king snakes. They grow up to be over three feet and some have been found up to six feet. These snakes have a widespread range from coast to coast in the US. There are five types of king snakes in Arizona. First, we have the California king, and that's typically black and white. We have the Mexican black king snake, almost black but very dark brown. We've got the desert king snake, which is black with yellowish green markings. That's mostly what we've seen. We've got the mountain king snake, which is red, black, and white. And then we have the milk snake, which is orange, black, and white. Just like the rattlesnake, the king snake can be found from sea level up to 7,000 feet. The king snake is often more active in the late afternoon and early morning with milder weather. The king snake preys on the same animals as a rattlesnake, so it's birds, it's rats, mice, lizards, but with one distinct addition, and that is that they will kill and eat rattlesnakes. The king snake is highly resistant to the venom of the rattlesnake. It attacks the rattlesnake by grabbing it behind its head and then it begins its constriction, sometimes starting to swallow the rattlesnake before it has even expired. In our yard, we have a den where king snakes live. We have seen them compete in our yard for this spot and we see our friendly yard king snake or snakes once or twice a year, usually earlier in the morning when we go outside to check out the sunrise. This is probably why we've never had a rattlesnake in our yard. We call them our yard snakes and our protectors. Gopher snakes are actually the longest snake in Arizona. The longest gopher snake is about 92 inches. That's almost nine feet. That's pretty long, but you're more likely to encounter a gopher snake that's more like four feet long or so. The gopher snake is not venomous, but it still has a pretty painful bite. They look similar to a rattlesnake, so if you think you've found one, make sure it's actually a gopher snake and not a rattlesnake. Gophers eat rattlers. They also compete with the rattlers for food and territory, but it's pretty uncommon to find them fighting. They eat small rodents like mice, chipmunks, rats, squirrels, and even prairie dogs if they're the right size. Gopher snakes hibernate in their dens, sometimes even sharing their dens with rattlers and occasionally some other species. But when it's breeding time, they get very protective of their territory. The gopher snakes are active in the day and the night. In the night, they hunt, and in the day, they're very curious, and they are docile. I still wouldn't pick one up in the wild, though. That's just me. I believe wild animals should be left alone. Let's talk about a couple of other cool Tucson snakes you may see. The coach whip is also known as a racer. They are long slender snakes that are very fast and like to hide in trees and brush. I've never seen one, but my husband has seen only one in the many years that we've lived here. Coach whips do eat rattlesnakes and can grow up to eight feet long and usually are black or brown. A similar looking snake is the Sonoran whip snake. It's another long and slender snake that can grow up to five feet long. Relatively harmless, but do not try to handle it since this snake is prone to biting. We know one person who's been bitten by one of these snakes in their home garden. So how do you keep your family safe from snakes, whether we're talking about your two-legged children or your four-legged children? Well, a backyard with a big brick wall around it will be better than a fence, but snakes can still get in through cracks or holes under the brick. Many people put chicken wire around the bottoms of their fences or walls or gates because bigger snakes usually have a harder time slithering through that. But the very best thing you can do is teach your family members about snakes and to stay away when they see one and to tell an adult. Then the adult can decide what to do. Snakes tend to like to hide under bushes or big rocks. So if you have a yard with a lot of plants and places for snakes to hide, they'll be more likely to be in your yard without you even knowing it as opposed to yards with low or no maintenance. A snake crawling around an empty backyard or front yard would be much easier to see than a yard with a bunch of bushes and places for snakes to hide. In our family, we have those snakes that live in the backyard, but they don't hurt anyone and they eat pack rats and rattlesnakes, so we're fine with them being there. Our children aren't babies or toddlers anymore, so we're not worried about them messing with the snakes. They know what to do and they know to stay away from snakes. But dogs, on the other hand, are often very curious. And if you have a dog that you think might mess with snakes, we do have rattlesnake training here in Tucson for dogs and it is usually very effective. I have a lot of friends who put their dogs through the training courses and it has saved their lives. So that's always an option. 
I hope you've learned a little bit about Tucson snakes in this video. I think snakes are beautiful and fascinating, but I don't ever get too close, and I don't think anyone should. To learn more about Tucson snakes, please visit Rattlesnake Solutions website and YouTube channel. They are here in Tucson and in Phoenix as well, and all their contact information is in the description below this video. If you want to learn more about Tucson and the surrounding areas, check out the rest of the videos on this channel, and of course, reach out to me when you want to buy or sell Tucson real estate. All my contact information is also in the description below each video on this channel and consider liking and subscribing on your way out the door for more content about Tucson and things to do, see, and know about this place. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I'll see you in the next Tucson video.